The human brain is a complex organ that is located within the skull. It controls all functions of the body by interpreting information which receives through our five senses, sight, smell, touch, taste, and hearing. It assembles the information in a way that has meaning for us. The average adult brain weighs around three pounds. Together, the brain and spinal cord make up the central nervous system, or CNS. Being the most vital organ, it's guarded by the skull and meninges. The purpose of the bony skull is to protect the brain from injury, while meninges are the three layers of tissue that provide additional protection and covering to the brain. The outermost layer, called the dura mater, is a thick and tough layer. It's composed of dense fibrous tissue. The middle layer, called the arachnoid mater, is a thin and transparent layer, which is composed of fibrous tissue. And the innermost layer is called pia mater, which is a thin and vascular layer that hugs the surface of the brain. The space between the dura and arachnoid layers is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Beside this, the brain also has hollow cavities deep inside its body containing the cerebrospinal fluid. These cavities are called ventricles. There are four ventricles in the brain, and the fluid in them helps to cushion the brain and spinal cord from injury. Now let's talk about the cellular composition of brain. The brain is made up of two types of cells, nerve cells, also called neurons, and glia cells. Nerve cells or neurons convey information through electrical and chemical signals. There are about 100 billion neurons in the brain, while glia cells provide nourishment, protection, and structural support to neurons. There are about 10 to 50 times more glia than nerve cells. If we cut the brain into two equal halves, we can observe two distinct regions, gray and white matter. In the brain, gray matter refers to the darker outer portion, while white matter describes the lighter inner section underneath. Gray matter is primarily composed of neuron cell bodies, and white matter is mostly made of myelinated axons. Each region serves a different role. Gray matter is primarily responsible for processing and interpreting information, while white matter transmits that information to other parts of the nervous system. So now let us see each and every part of the brain in detail. The part of the brain dealing with the information in a particular period of time needs more blood. And thanks to science, that by viewing the blood flow images in the brain, we can now understand the function of each and every part of the brain. The brain structure is composed of three main parts, the forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain, each with multiple parts. Forebrain. The structures in the forebrain include the cerebrum, thalamus, pituitary gland, pineal gland, limbic system, and the olfactory bulb. The cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest part of the human brain and it is associated with higher brain function such as thought and action. The cerebrum is divided into two halves, the right and left hemispheres. A bundle of axons called the corpus callosum connects the two hemispheres. Each hemisphere controls the opposite side of the body. If a stroke occurs on the right side of the brain, your left arm or leg may be weak or paralyzed. The right hemisphere is considered our creative side, and the left hemisphere is considered our logical side. In general, the left hemisphere controls speech, comprehension, arithmetic, and writing. The right hemisphere controls creativity, spatial ability, artistic and musical skills. The cerebrum consists of two regions, the outer darker region called cerebral cortex and the inner whitish region called cerebral medulla. Cortex. The surface of the cerebrum is called the cortex. It has a folded appearance with hills and valleys. Because of the presence of neuronal cell bodies, it appears grayish. You can remember the cerebral cortex like the orange peel. Imagine a gray matter to be like an orange peel, and what's inside the peel is medulla, white matter, of the forebrain. The folding of the cortex increases the brain's surface area, allowing more neurons to fit inside the skull and enabling higher functions. Each fold is called a gyrus, and each groove between folds is called a sulcus. There are some larger grooves are present, which are called fissures. These large grooves divide cerebrum into four sections called lobes. Each lobe controls specific functions. Frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is the largest lobe of the brain, located in the front of the head. It is separated from the parietal lobe by a space called the central fissure. 
and from the temporal lobe by the lateral fissure. Functionally, the entire frontal cortex of the frontal lobe is divided into three parts, the prefrontal cortex, motor cortex, and Broca's area. Prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is a part of the brain located at the front of the frontal lobe. It plays a crucial role in the processing of intellectual and emotional information, including aggression and facilities judgment and decision making. For example, if you're driving a car in a congested area, you will have to interpret a lot of information in a short period of time, which requires your prefrontal cortex to be very active in order to assist you in judging the road and making decisions at every step of the way. Motor cortex. The motor cortex is an area of the frontal lobe located posterior to the prefrontal cortex. The primary function of the motor cortex is to generate signals to direct the movement of the body. For example, if you move your hand to lift a book from the table, it's the motor cortex functions to guide the right muscles of your hand in a sequence, causing your hand to move in the direction of the book. Broca's area. Broca's area is also known as the motor speech area. It is near the motor cortex and utilized in speech production. This area regulates breathing patterns while speaking and vocalizations required for normal speech. So in general, we can say that the frontal lobe is important for voluntary movement, expressive language, and for managing higher level executive functions. Parietal lobe. The parietal lobe is located just behind the frontal lobe, separated by the central sulcus. The parietal lobe can be divided into three regions. The most anterior portion of the parietal lobe is the postcentral gyrus. Functionally, this region receives sensory information from all sensory receptors that provide information related to temperature, pain vibration, and fine touch. Thus, the postcentral gyrus of the frontal lobe is mainly involved in processing various types of sensory information. For example, if we touch something and get the impression that it's hot or cold, round or flat. So all of these interpretations are taking place in our postcentral gyrus. The rest of the parietal lobe is divided into two main parts, the superior and inferior parietal lobules. The superior parietal lobule contributes to sensory motor integration which means that signals from the brain allow the superior parietal lobule to anticipate, plan, or guide movement of a person in a specific direction. Besides, this superior parietal lobule also help us manipulate shapes and spot patterns between complex shapes. This ability is called special reasoning. While the third region is called inferior parietal lobule contributes with mathematical operations, for example, counting monthly investments and turnover in some business. It also deals with language, for example, recognizing the language. Temporal lobe. The temporal lobe is located at the sides of the brain. It is separated from the frontal lobe by the lateral fissure. The temporal lobe contains the cortical areas that process different information like auditory information, visual processing, and memory. So let's break it down further. Auditory information. The temporal lobe contains the primary auditory cortex, which receives auditory information from the ears and secondary areas, and processes the information so we understand what we're hearing. For example, words, laughing, a baby crying, visual processing. Certain areas in the temporal lobe make sense of complex visual information, including faces and scenes. Memory. Temporal lobe contains the hippocampus, a region of the brain important for memory, learning, and emotions. We will talk about that in a minute. Occipital lobe. The occipital lobe is located at the back of our brain. It forms the most posterior portion of the brain and is found behind both the parietal and the temporal lobes. The occipital lobe is identified as the main visual processing center. It is associated with color determination, facial recognition, for example, recognizing the faces you've seen before, and depth perception, like if someone is walking towards you or away. Some other structures of forebrain. Thalamus. The thalamus is a small ovoid structure located near the center of the brain just above the midbrain. Thalamus is a regulatory gateway. It's responsible for relaying information from the sensory receptors to proper areas of the brain where it can be processed. It actually diagnoses different sensory information that are being transmitted to the brain, including auditory, visual, tactile, relating to touch, and signals like taste. 
and directs that information to the different parts of the lobes of the cortex. Hence, we can say that the thalamus is like the United Parcel Service. It gathers information from various centers of the brain and spinal cord and directs them to the correct address in the cerebral cortex. Besides this, thalamus also involves in regulation of sleep, alertness, and wakefulness. The Limbic System The limbic system is a complex set of structures that lies just under the cerebrum. It includes hypothalamus, amygdala, and hippocampus. Hypothalamus It is located just below the thalamus and above the pituitary gland. The most important function of the hypothalamus is to link the nervous system to the endocrine system via pituitary gland. Hypothalamus also involves in controlling some somatic functions like body temperature, sleep, and appetite. Hippocampus Hippocampus is located in the medial temporal lobes of the cerebrum. The structure of hippocampus looks like that of a seahorse. The primary role of the hippocampus is memory forming, organizing and storing information. It is particularly important in forming new memories and connecting emotions and senses, such as smell and sound, to memories. If one or both parts of the hippocampus are damaged by illness, such as Alzheimer's disease, or if they are hurt in an accident, the person can experience a loss of memory and a loss of the ability to make new long-term memories. Amygdala The amygdala is a small, roughly round structure located in the medial temporal lobe, just in front of the hippocampus. The function of the amygdala is to control emotional and behavioral characters in a person, like expression of fear, expression of happiness, mediation of social communication. Beside this, the amygdala is associated with the brain's reward system. Like during eating good food or being in love, it activates feelings of pleasure. And it also deals with stress like fight or flight response. For example, if you've ever suffered a dog bite, then the amygdala may help in processing that event and therefore increase your fear or alertness around dogs. Lesion and amygdala can link to lack of emotional responses and dealing abilities of a person in stress conditions. Pituitary gland. The pituitary is a pea-sized gland connected to the hypothalamus of the brain by the pituitary stalk. It's located in the center of the skull, just behind the bridge of the nose. The primary role of the pituitary gland is an important link between the nervous system and the endocrine system. It releases many hormones which affect growth, metabolism, sexual development, and the reproduction system. Olfactory bulb. In humans, the olfactory bulb is on the inferior bottom side of the frontal lobe of the brain. The olfactory bulb transmits smell information from the nose to the brain and is thus necessary for a proper sense of smell. Pineal gland. Pineal gland is located behind the third ventricle. It helps regulate the body's internal clock and circadian rhythms by secreting melatonin. If pineal gland isn't working properly, your sleep pattern can be disturbed, which leads to insomnia. It has some role in sexual development. Midbrain. The midbrain is located below the cerebral cortex and above the hindbrain, placing it near the center of the brain. The midbrain is the smallest region of the brain. The primary role of the midbrain is to act as a sort of relay station for our visual and auditory systems. Of the 12 pairs of cranial nerves, two nerves thread directly from the midbrain. The oculomotor and trochlear nerves which are responsible for eye and eyelid movement. Portions of the midbrain, called the red nucleus, and the substantia nigra are involved in the control of body movement and contain a large number of dopamine-producing neurons. The degeneration of neurons in the substantia nigra can lead to Parkinson's disease. Hindbrain The hindbrain is one of the three major regions of our brains, located at the lower back part of the brain. There are three main parts of the hindbrain, pons, cerebellum, and medulla oblongata. You've probably heard about the brain stem before. Well, pons, medulla, and midbrain combine to form brain stem. It acts like a bridge for sending information between different parts of the brain and spinal cord. Cerebellum. The largest part of the hindbrain is the cerebellum. The cerebellum is located at the back of the brain beneath the occipital lobes, like the cerebral cortex. It has two hemispheres, each hemisphere of the cerebellum influences motor activity on the same half side of the body. It is associated with regulation and coordination of the movement of muscles, posture, and balance, coordination of goal-directed and spontaneous movements, 
and some cognitive functions like language acquisition, riding a bike and playing music, etc. Pons. The pons is located above the medulla and below the midbrain. Visually, it looks like an enlarged section of medulla oblongata, a portion of brains below the pons. The pons plays an important role in the functioning of the automatic nervous system, like breathing and digesting. It also relays motor information between the cerebellum and cerebrum. Injury to the pons may result in impaired breathing and coma. Medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is located between the pons and the spinal cord. It is therefore the most inferior portion of the brain stem. Its functions are involuntary. We would not be able to live without the medulla because of the myriad of crucial tasks it performs, including breathing, blood pressure, cardiac rhythms, and swallowing. As a part of the brain stem, it also helps transfer neural messages from the brain to the spinal cord. As we have learned about all the structures of the brain, let us see how the information is transferred between the brain and body. The brain communicates with the body through the spinal cord and 12 pairs of cranial nerves. These nerves are a part of the peripheral nervous system, PNS. 10 of the 12 pairs of cranial nerves that control hearing, eye movement, facial sensations, taste, swallowing, and movement of the face, neck, shoulder, and tongue muscles originate in the brainstem, while the cranial nerves for smell and vision originate in the cerebrum. At the end, let us see that how the blood is supplied to the brain for proper functioning. Two sets of blood vessels supply blood and oxygen to the brain, the vertebral arteries and the internal carotid arteries. While the internal jugular veins are considered to be the main pathways of carrying blood away from brain to the heart. Thank you.